take you to another social problem that has of recently become much more um, visible, but certainly in India, but all around the world. And that is of how do we create, how do we address the problem of women's safety and how do we address the problem of community safety? How do we build safer communities? And this is a prevention, a preventive way of addressing safety, not only looking at violence after it has occurred, but how do we build from the community level safer communities? Uh, we know that cities are growing across the world. We know that safety and violence in cities is an increasing problem which we need to find ways of addressing because the, the violence in cities prevents uh, a lot of uh, economic activity, it prevents women from going out, it prevents sometimes girls from accessing schools, it prevents a range of um, activities from taking place. Uh, we believe very strongly that in order to um, have safer cities and safer communities, we need to engage with the community. We need to engage with people. We don't believe the solution is only lies with the police. Uh, our tendency is when a violent incident occurs, we look at the police and point our fingers. But in fact, while the police need to certainly do their job much better, we believe very strongly that unless people become involved in safety and people begin to recognize that they have a role to play in creating safer communities, we are not actually going to have safer communities. We may have better responses to violence, but we're not going to build a culture of non-violence and safety. And therefore, we need to improve the response, we need to find data, we need to find ways of addressing uh, the lack of safety. And what Safety Pin has done, uh, and just to give you an idea why we thought of Safety Pin as a name, that has three reasons. Uh, we've pinned, if you look at the right picture, there are pins on a map. It's a map-based application. It's available on Android and iPhone platforms. It will be available on, an, um, on uh, Windows, and it's also going to be available on an online platform. And the idea is to get people to pin uh, where they feel unsafe, but not just uh, pinning uh, issues of violence, it includes pinning where you have experienced violence, but also for a, a methodology which we call the safety audit. If you look at the left picture, there are nine parameters which we have included in defining what makes people feel safe or unsafe. It's not merely the incident of violence, but what prevents us and what actually determines our behavior is often if we think a place is unsafe. If we think something is unsafe, we respond in a different way. How do we begin to address the perception because it's not, only, it's not enough to only address incidents of violence after it happens. So the nine parameters that we have defined, and this is based on international work around safety and the safety audit as a methodology that has been used in over 45 countries, including many countries in Africa and Latin America, uh, is lighting, which I think the Kudum Kudumbashri person also spoke about, how simply improving lighting can improve safety's uh, perception but also openness, whether there are people on the streets, uh, is there security, is public transport close by, are there women and children on the streets, and most important, how do you feel? So the idea is really to get people who have, the, who have uh, access to phones, it's not only for people who have access to phones, I will talk about that, but the initial one layer of people is how people who have access to phones can input information and use information about safety. So if I need to go to a new place, if I open the safety pin application, I will see all the safety audits that have been done in that place by, it is a crowdsourced method. We have done, we have commissioned some number of audits. So in Delhi currently, where it's been launched on November 13th, it's a very new application. There are about three and, three and a half thousand audits. It's recently been launched in Bangalore also. There are about 350 audits. So it's a, it's a very new technology. The idea is to get people to input information and to use the information. Uh, we had a partnership with the Hindustan Times to publicize it, to get people to use it. Because it will only work when people begin to use it and there's more information for each one of us to access. It also has other useful information such as where is a police station, where are hospitals, where are shops, where are medical facilities, etc. How do we take Safety Pin uh, uh, to other cities? We believe very strongly that Safety Pin is an app that can be used anywhere in the world. I mean, currently, the technology is such that you can use it anywhere in the world. You can open it anywhere in the world and use it. What you will not have right now is the information in different cities. So what we need to do is to actually have launches and pilots in cities whereby the information gets inputted so that there is something. 
uh, it's it's a free app. It will always remain a free app. And the idea is to get uh, individuals and communities to begin to access this, both to um, input data and to use it. But more importantly, we believe that getting such large numbers of data as we have, for example, in Delhi got over three and a half thousand points audited. This has given us the ability to do advocacy with a range of stakeholders, including Delhi police, Gurgaon police, the public works department, uh, the uh, UTPEC, which is an urban planning body. So large amounts of data allows for improved advocacy with data that we can share. We are also trying to um, actually have uh, sort of quantify to some extent to have safety scores so that people can begin to understand how safe their own community is. And if they want to make it safer, what needs to be done? and therefore work with key service providers. So the idea is to actually stimulate the individual, the community, and the stakeholder to begin to respond. And finally, um, <coughs> uh, we want to, we recognize that mobile technology in itself is currently, uh, in a country like India, and maybe in some countries of Africa, is not com has not completely penetrated down to the low-income neighborhoods, to uh, poor communities. So we are looking at a model of what we're calling a safety center which uses both mobile, online, and offline methods to collect safety data and then use community-based mobilization strategies to um, take the data, do advocacy, go to see service providers, and, uh, and then therefore uh, force change to take place. So for example, just uh, very quickly uh, how it might work is that we are doing a currently a small pilot in three places. One of them is in Gurgaon where um, a small, in two communities, we form these community centers, they're called safety chopals, where uh, five phones have been bought, five cheap Android phones at four, four, four and a half thousand. The youth and the women in the community have been trained to use those. So uh, every, um, every month or so, there will be some safety audits done around the community. In addition to that, there is an online platform which is just currently being um, ready. It's a new technology, whereby the, a lot of the information can be inputted on the computer. Except the safety audit, all other in information can be inputted on the computer, but all information can be consumed from, the com from an online platform. And finally, we have community meetings every week with women and the youth, whereby they talk about their safety, safety concerns, we present the data that they have compiled, and then they take that to uh, key stakeholders to ask for an improvement, which is maybe a public toilet which needs to be improved, maybe lighting which needs to be improved, maybe a liquor store which needs to be moved, and, so, and the like. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kalpana. Any questions? I just wondered if we could move the debate along. So it's interesting to see how we use technology to monitor safety issues. But, you know, change will come when women start to be empowered more by understanding their own situation. So I wondered if uh, your app can actually do things like encourage women to maintain a violence diary in the house or through these uh, community centers. So not only do we map how unsafe the areas are, but also violence in the house, uh, in the household uh, and surrounding areas. So once you, know, you start to see that there's a systematic pattern to it and whether this can be addressed. So do you see uses like that for your app? I mean, I think domestic violence and violence, intimate partner violence is, uh, is a, uh, is, is a form of violence against women, but it is a much more complicated way to, a form of violence to address. Uh, we have fo currently focused on looking at community-based models of addressing violence. So um, when, uh, I don't think it's not, it's not possible to include domestic violence, and I think the idea of getting women to look at their own personal diaries and map it is an interesting idea we could look at. Currently, we're not looking at domestic violence. I've worked in the field of violence for 25 years, and I know the strategies to address domestic violence uh, inside a home is, a, is also a very different set of stakeholders we have to approach often. Sorry, we missed out on the other two uh, reasons why you use safety pin as your uh, name of the application. Oh, the name. <laughs> well, there are three. One was that it's used, um, there are pins of safety all over the, uh, in our maps. The second is um, a safety pin is used to actually join things. 
you know, when something is coming apart, all of us wear, Indian women have safe, uh, safety pins to keep our sarees together. So we see safety pin, the, the app, as also a way of actually joining communities, getting community work together. And finally, in India at least, the safety pin has been used as a tool uh, of self-defense by women. We carry them in crowded buses to poke men. So it was also to take the, <laughs> the whole idea of you know, the safety pin as a personal safety device also and, and have a safety device. So this is both a personal safety device and a community safety device that we're looking at. Thank you.